This is the Salesforce Architect Group Jacksonville meeting. And uh, I think this is our fourth meeting as far as I can count. Usually we get together about once a quarter and we have very focused presentations around capabilities in Salesforce. Uh, we try and finish everything in one hour. Uh, and we are not really about swags and uh, uh, certification voucher codes, more uh, targeted content around Salesforce. And uh, this week, before I go into the meeting, let me uh, introduce myself one more time if there's anybody new in the room. My name is Andy Engin Utkan. Uh, I'm the principal consult consultant of process automation. I work for Serious Solutions. And I do create a lot of content in Salesforce. Uh, my focus area is low, and I have several courses, blog, and the newsletter on LinkedIn available for uh, capabilities around flow automation. And uh, I am about to start actually another cohort of the complete flow course, which is a live course that takes about six weeks to complete. Uh, we do hands-on exercises and prepare you uh, in flow automation capabilities. If you're interested, just let me know. And today we have let me just see. We have Svet uh, joining us, uh, Svet Voloshin, uh, technical architect as Booz, at Booz Allen Hamilton. And uh, about, I think it's been close to two years. Uh, two years ago, I implemented Salesforce Scheduler for somebody uh, who, uh, you know, actually explored the possibility of using Canonly for that kind of automation, and it didn't work out. I spent about two weeks going through the material, uh, trying to set it up, and uh, that's how uh, Sweat and I connected, and uh, he asked me how I did it back in the day, but then, you know, we couldn't actually look at that uh, implementation. It's with the client, and he uh, and his colleagues, I think, got together and worked out uh, the implementation themselves anyway, so they built a demo, and Sweat was very kind uh, to offer this demo to us uh, so that we can record it, share it, and then uh, spread the knowledge. Thank you very much, Svet. Thanks for joining us today. So take it away. My pleasure. So this demo is something that we actually presented at the DC World Tour. So we were there the entire day. So that's about eight hours of presentations, maybe not continuously, but uh, you'll see what came out of that. Uh, so I'll start with the demo and then I'll transition on to my deck. I promise it will be not that boring. And uh, then please feel free to ask questions uh, when I'm going through the deck, if you don't mind. So uh, the focus was public sector. Of course, DC World Tours are about the US government. And uh, uh, my company, Booz Allen, works almost exclusively with the federal government. And so we got access through Salesforce to this you know, wonderful template of the Experience Cloud. And uh, I welcome you to the Department of the Future. And so if you know me, I'd like to be a bit uh, tongue in cheek and uh, corny. And so what I decided to do is I suggested that we focus this demo on uh, vaccination. So basically making, <clears throat> scheduling vaccination appointments. And so I would start by saying, have you guys heard of COVID? And of course, people would say, oh, yeah, of course. So I said, let's suppose you are um, a federal employee or just a, a civilian or actually any kind of person who needs to get a vaccination appointment. Uh, so you go to, this is an unauthenticated user. So that's why I'm in an incognito mode. So you can see nobody's logged in over here. And I'd like to just go ahead and schedule the vaccination appointment. So right away, you get taken to the page uh, with the Salesforce scheduler. And uh, so you click on this and then you say, okay, would you like a virtual or on-site appointment? Since it's the department of the future, we can also do virtual vaccinations here. So let's, it, it doesn't matter for the purposes of this demo because I've done both. Um, so you click on site and then uh, you would so, you know, type in your zip code. So we were in Washington DC. And so I figured I'll make one service tour, tour available. And uh, to make it more interesting, I'd say, okay, um, let's pick Arlington, Virginia, which is just over the river. 
I used to live there for a long time. So Washington DC pops up, it's within five miles, or if you're say in Fairfax, then you have to move on to say 25 miles and so on, that actually works. So that takes you to the page and look at that. Magically, Svet Voloshin is available to take your appointment. And so you can actually schedule appointments in the future as well as in the past, because we're a department in the future where we can handle just about anything. And so you would click the uh, one of the available time slots. Saturday and Sunday, we are off on break. And uh, you get taken to this uh, handy dandy page where you would fill out their personal information, right? And so at this point, we would be done with this particular part of the demo because you can imagine what happens here. Now, I'll tell you, since everybody here is a Salesforce nerd, this creates a lead and then it creates a service appointment for that, right? So if you fill out this information, that will check against the uh, duplicate rules and the matching rules and so on and so forth. All right. So I did promise you this, and I also promised you the um, the chatbot situation. So the chatbot, let me tell you, that was a doozy. That that was a pretty difficult thing to implement. And I'm going to switch to a different screen over here. Should be able to see uh, Clara Constituent. So um, at this point, I'm going to log into the Experience Cloud as an authenticated user. So this would be a uh, Clara constituent. So with this um, <clears throat> trial force org, you also get access to other types of experience cloud where we're gonna stick with this constituent self-service. And uh, so Clara, let's say wants to uh, go ahead and do the same thing, but she doesn't wanna go through the schedule for one reason or another. And uh, the whole point is that nobody is available to help her. Right, so we're just going to do everything through the bot. Let's pray that this is going to work. So you see that her personal information is already filled out. Uh, email, of course, you can make uh, required or not required for the purposes of this demo. You can collect other type of information as well. And so the whole point here is to book an appointment. Uh, so let's say, all right. So we've got Paul, uh, PBU bot that comes on and say, okay, I'm your public sector bot, right? So what would you like to do? Let's click on appointments. So would you like a new existing appointment? New appointment, excellent. And then what would you like to meet about? So vaccination. So these are all choices with the Einstein chatbots. If that's something that you've ever played with before. And uh, here, let's say that she already knows with whom she would like to meet. So that'll be with me. And uh, at this point, you get the uh, choice of the times. So the choice of the times here is always going to be in the future. You only get three choices and it's also for the same day, right? So the, those are some of the limitations that we introduced. So you don't get this like, huge column of choices. And this was basically sufficient uh, to get people an idea of what is possible here. Uh, so um, that that's it. So this, this schedules the appointment. So this piece, uh, was done by three of us, really by um, my, my coworker who's a technical architect who codes, I don't code, but we actually had to find the guy who created this functionality. And I have more information on him during my deck. So this one is an actual kind of a cool story. All right, so at this point, let me log out and I'll switch over to this. So, um, Andy or myself, we can share out this deck at the end. So the whole purpose of this one is I also teach a course, uh, which is twice a month. And uh, it's for the folks who are somewhat new to Salesforce, but and some not so new. But I also uh, show here how to demo and how to demo in the kind of a live trade show environment. So I'm going to skip these parts and go straight to the world tour. So. What other things did we uh, show over there? So besides the skills for scheduling chatbots, we also demoed Service Cloud Voice, which I'm happy to do, as well as knowledge articles. And speaking of which, I forgot about the knowledge articles, so let me switch back and, uh, and show you that as well. Okay, so the knowledge article would work like this. So, we would go, 
collect the basic information. This is again for an unauthenticated user. Let's say that the person just scheduled an appointment and they have questions about what they should bring with them to that particular appointment. So they would hit search knowledge. And then uh, at this point, we will just ask for natural language. So ask them to type in vaccination and the bot will uh, offer you an article which was conveniently prepared by yours truly. Uh, so at this point, it will just show you a little bit of a snippet and uh, a link to that article. So they click on the link and uh, they get the article, uh, which is something that was borrowed uh, from I believe, Department of Health and Human Services. As a, this is actually legit information for something of a real demo. So that's the other thing that we, we showed. Okay, so um, it took us about three weeks. We didn't have a whole lot of time to put all this together. Uh, and I think we were pretty successful. We had a lot of positive um, feedback uh, from, from the people to whom we were showing it, as well as internal uh, people and so on and so forth. So Salesforce Scheduler, uh, you may know it as a lightning scheduler. Uh, this is the whole point of this is to schedule kind of inbound appointments. So you make it available. The Salesforce loves to use this example of um, you know, people trying to meet their banker. And so you schedule an appointment to see who is available based on what skills, et cetera. Right? So we also use the skills in this particular case. We gave people who there's only three of them, the service resources who could uh, vaccinate because they were vaccination technicians. Other ones just would not show up at all. And, and so I'm borrowing this information from Salesforce, and uh, this is supposed to just make your life easier. Of course, there are plenty of limitations. So this tells you a bit more about Experience Cloud, the whole point of it, and so on. And uh, in my presentations, I usually include links. So these uh, titles are usually links, and sometimes you'll see that these are links to Trailhead and other resources. And uh, a bit more on Einstein chatbots. So um, what I would like to tell you is that um, despite the fact that we got this to work and we got this to work with the help of uh, this gentleman right here who used to be at Salesforce, he was actually a distinguished engineer. Uh, and he was kind enough to lend about a couple hours of his time. I found this uh, video demo, which I'm linking to right here because we just couldn't get this thing to work. So Kronos appears on the App Exchange, and you may or may not have seen it, but it has somewhat low reviews. And the reviews are because people just didn't quite understand how it uh, is supposed to function, right? So automatically they said, okay, whatever, we're not gonna worry about this low review, boom. But it was part of Salesforce Labs. And it really never caught on, but at that time, and I'm talking about what, April uh, or so, it was the only game in town. Now with summer 23, uh, there's a new feature that's coming out or maybe it's already out, which basically is going to replace this functionality. So Kronos uh, is a bot that runs within another bot. Not confusing at all, right? And if you go on the App Exchange uh, listing of Kronos, uh, there's actually there's actually a quip document that Mark himself authored, and it has a pretty extensive list of uh, things that you have to do in order to get the. I think it's over here in uh, more details, and if I'm mistaken. Uh, yeah, right here. So this is the bot setup guide. So this thing is pretty extensive. And even then, we had trouble with it. So basically, I don't think you'll have to go through all of this uh, because look out for the summer 23 highlights. And I have a presentation on that. Uh, it will probably, they'll, they'll make it easier for, uh, for anybody who wants to be able to schedule appointments. But uh, this guy is kind of an expert on chatbots, so I do encourage you to look him up on Medium. Uh, and this obscure demo is how I found him. I basically reached out via LinkedIn. And uh, what a luminary. Uh, seriously, it was a wonderful experience. OK, so um, again, why would you want to do that? If you already have somebody who is using the chatbot, you don't want to redirect them somewhere else. This will make it for more seamless uh, customer experience. 
Plus, it's uh, very cool. And since we got it to work, I said, you know what? We're probably the only guys in the world who actually have this functioning at this time. So that's really why we did it. It's for the nerd wow factor, right? And that's probably one of the reasons why I'm here for you guys as well. Uh, so, um, so then I, I'd be remiss if I didn't show you the Service Cloud Voice. So this is a bit more about Service Cloud Voice. Has anybody seen Service Cloud Voice in action? Has anybody set it up or used it? Okay. So then uh, you're in luck. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my phone off of uh, DMD. So I have Service Cloud Voice already saved here. And uh, we'll go back. Uh, so this is the service console and uh, you have to launch omnichannel. So of course it's all pre-configured and we're gonna go and enable for voice only. Now uh, you're probably familiar with omnichannel and if you can imagine it's important to say uh, whenever there's a voice um, conversation involved that this agent is 100% utilized, right? Because you're not gonna be able to handle more than one phone call at a time. Uh, you're not gonna be doing chats or anything like that, right? So you, the idea is that you wanna give your customer full attention. So um, what I'm gonna do is, is call this and- uh, Thank you for calling. Calls may be monitored for quality assurance. Can you hear this? Calls may be mo monitored, okay. Welcome to file-based flow. Transferring to customer support. And Thank I also you for calling. Out. Your call is very SCB basic Q. So I made it over here so that uh, you don't have to press any additional buttons. So the call gets picked up automatically and it gets uh, basically routed to me since I'm the only agent who is available. And it tells you a couple of things over here. So first it tells you matching contact record was link. You can take a look, review the changes, but you really don't have to. So what you can do here, so this is first of all, the voice record that pops up. This you can minimize. And then this is the contact record that is actually linked to that phone number that is calling you, right? So whenever you're telling somebody, well, you get a call pop, right? This is one of the ways that call pop can actually work. So it's actually uh, somewhat unobtrusive. You get a sub tab over here, and then you know more about your customer, et cetera, et cetera. Now, what is happening on this side, which I think is pretty cool, is a live transcription. So whatever I'm saying, um, and you can imagine that right now, I am. Um, it's probably picking up only the computer side of things. But if I turn off the computer microphone, you probably won't be able to hear me, uh, but then I'll have to turn on the microphone on the phone and you'll get the other side as well, right? So what I'll do at this point is I'll hang up over here. And in a huge you know, room in the convention center in the largest building in DC, this was super funky because this thing was picking up other side conversations and we had all kinds of uh, robotic gaffes happening as well. But nevertheless, so this is something that is handled by um, Amazon um, Service Cloud Voice. And so the other, of course, you may have heard of this functionality is that is you're on the call, you can look up certain knowledge articles. And let's say you have somebody's information, then you can also create a button here that would probably launch a flow. This is Andy's department, and it will send you that knowledge article and uh, so that this is something actionable. Uh, you can also, for the purpose of this demo, uh, we put this component in here to uh, schedule, manually schedule a visit. So suppose the person's having trouble with that, they want to call you, they want you to help them out uh, instead of uh, you, know, you telling them, you know, go back and try again, uh, you'll be able to do it for them. And of course, if the call gets dropped, you don't have to ask them, can you give me the best phone number so we can reach you if the call gets dropped? So you basically do this, uh, you uh, hit this and, and boom, you get a phone call. Uh, so right back. So it's it's really a two-way kind of communication. So um, I would be remiss if I didn't show you how things look under the hood uh, for Service Cloud Voice. At first, I was actually quite intimidated by the fact that I'm going to need to set this up. But once I got into it, actually, it's not so bad. Uh, so 
first you type in Amazon, you go through this whole list of stages. And it does tell you that you actually have to create permission sets and assign the permissions and, and yada, yada, yada. There's a little bit to do on the initially on the Amazon side of things, but then you really have to also create the contact center, right? And so this is a bit of a, a something you need to wrap your head around. Um, if you read the instructions, if you read the documentation, it does say that you do everything from within Salesforce. Now I would say for the most part it's true, uh, but so let's say you create the Amazon contact center and that's, that's not all, right? Because this is the actual telephony provider. Now with Service Cloud Voice, you know, uh, if you're using Amazon Connect then it's all 100% in the cloud, it's all virtual. Uh, you're not connecting to actually any hardware. But if you were to connect to existing telephony, then most likely you're going to need some kind of an adapter. Something that we've implemented back in the day was a uh, Bucher and Suter that would connect to Cisco Finesse and uh, utilize that. But this is actually Amazon Connect. It is on AWS, as you can see right here. So this is not Salesforce. And it does actually use the concept of flows as well. And uh, there are some sample flows that already come with the system. There's like, what, 33 of them. You can clone them. You can do very much the similar thing that you do in Salesforce. And this is what it looks like if you haven't seen this before. Uh, so this is basically the whole uh, user experience. So you may give choices to your customers. Uh, you may uh, bring in interactions as in like, okay, so press one for this, press two for that. You can actually drive people crazy if you're not careful because you can put them in the infinite loop as they go through the menu of options and then they get redirected to the beginning, right? So you can frustrate people if you're not careful with that. And so this one will uh, route to the correct queue and you know create a case for you. Uh, so there's really two kinds of queues. There are queues on Amazon uh, Connect. And then there's, of course, the Salesforce queues. And you have, to, you have to match them up. You have to map the queues. So essentially, first, Amazon Connect takes over, and it does what it needs to do. Uh, all of the prompts, all of the uh, you know, hold music, things like that is handled by Amazon Connect. And then it sends it over to Salesforce. And that's when the Salesforce Cloud, the actual voice in, in the UI takes over. And so you've got your different queues uh, depending on different uh, criteria. And so this is basically something that you've seen before. It's a channel, so you assign the people that you want to handle these calls and you go from there. So really, uh, what's the main takeaway from this particular experience? Service Cloud Voice is actually not that scary. Uh, and uh, yes, you can actually have this and you can even dial out. And uh, it will give you, even for demo purposes, uh, you can choose your area code. Uh, I was able to get more than one phone number from the 202 area code, which is Washington DC. I was actually quite surprised by that, uh, but it's definitely possible. And, um, and that's my story about the Service Cloud Voice. Now, let me go back to the scheduler and tell you a little bit more about how to actually set it up. Uh, so scheduler, as I'm sure you know, is based on the uh, field service lightning data model. And so I'm linking to that uh, over here. This is going to be the last slide. So whether you click here or here, it doesn't matter. It leads to the same spot. This is the well-architected uh, version of it. And this is the, the trailhead, of course. Now, um, once you get this package, right? And this actually comes pre-installed with this particular trial force um, template. Uh, then you can go through this app right here and it will kind of walk you step by step. And here it will show you the progress uh, up at the top. So I reset the progress because all of this has already been done. Uh, but you set up permissions and then you service resource and assign a skill. And then you uh, set up the service appointment, the topic and the template and blah, 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 blah. And so this is basically, it, it does walk you through all of that. Uh, and of course, at the top, you can see the various already set up components. Uh, so service territory, 
pretty important. Uh, you can always, of course, take a look at the data model, or you can also look at the related lists over here and kind of work backwards uh, from there. Um, a few things that I'll touch on. So there is, of course, the, the base calendar, uh, which is going to work for this particular territory, right? And um, this base calendar is going to be well, like a single one for, uh, for, for all the people who are assigned to this territory, right? But that doesn't mean that uh, they're going to be available throughout that time, because you also have their own um, calendars that you have to set up as well. And uh, in the time slots, these records get actually automatically populated based on what you do here. And this is possible to do in the UI. And trust me, it's a lot less painful to do it like this, as opposed to creating these uh, time slots, which of course is another choice you can do. So see it, it bounces this to the operating hour um, tab. Uh, so what else do you see from, um, from the related list? So you've got the locations. So location would be in this case, a particular building and uh, so this is a junction object, okay? Uh, then there's the address and it kind of drills down pretty deep, uh, but then work type group, this is where you define the big squares that you see, what exactly you're trying to schedule. In this case, it's the vaccination appointment and then all this stuff that actually uh, relates to it. So you've got the group members, work type. So you're probably familiar with work type that comes from uh, field service lightning. And uh, this is where you define the duration. And of course, there's many more rules uh, to this. Is this uh, intuitive to set up? I would say not really. If you haven't done this before, most likely you're not going to be able to set this up, you know, super quick and then the first try. Uh, but if you go through the setup assistant, if you read a bit more uh, documentation, or if you're lucky enough to have an org where some of this is already set up, you can always reverse engineer it from there. And, and so uh, over here, this is another uh, custom component that they set up. And this is where you select uh, the skills that are actually required uh, to produce this, to be able to satisfy this work type. So then basically the folks who are going to be assigned to those skills, they have to have that skill themselves. And so those will be the, the service um, resources. So if you take a look at me, for instance, this is the last thing I'm gonna show and then I'm gonna stop boring you to death. Uh, so these are the appointments that I, I were assigned to me. Uh, these are my skills, of course. And of course, the most important one over here, it's like, if you think about it, each cloud has a central object. So for sales cloud, this would be an opportunity. For service cloud, it would be a case. And for um, field service lighting, as well as for a calendar, this will be the service appointments. So those are the kind of the central. Everything culminates in this. And so you, you got your um, lookups, the contact who is actually coming is very important. It's an actual human being. They have cases attached to them, et cetera. Uh, they are assigned to a particular account. So in this case, this is a business account, uh, but it could be a personal account as well. Uh, and then um, you even have parent records and uh, duration. So the service appointment itself is not a very complicated record. But you know, this is something you can actually report on, and this is uh, you you track it against your calendar. So um, that concludes my handy dandy presentation on Salesforce Scheduler and chatbots, as well as Service Cloud Voice, and as well as a little bit of Experience Cloud. So thank you for bearing with me and being so patient. Any questions at this point? Thank you very much, Svet. Uh... I have a couple of quick questions. One is, uh, when I set this up, it didn't it didn't come with links to add to your calendar. Like you know, the the person who is booking the appointment mm -hmm. cannot be added to their own calendar. Did they add that? Did you, Did you see anything like that? The calendar. That's a good question. I kind of have. have... <laughs> Have an idea that you may you may ask that. Uh, isn't the person who gets the 
appointment scheduled like you, you yeah yeah uh, but i mean it would be at the end of the screens i i don't remember seeing it it would be at the end of the screens where you kind of setting up picking up picking picking a time and then you know at the end there should be links to add to your own calendar probably they still don't have it no they because, don't i haven't seen that either uh, because i remember uh the the client asked for it and i remember banging my hang, head against the wall trying to set this up for for Google, you can kind of manipulate and create a link for uh, Microsoft if it's online, possibly, but for Apple, it's impossible. So, you know, that should really come with it. And, you know, it seems like they haven't added that. And uh, I don't know if you check that, but, you know, there is flow templates, right? You know, maybe can you can you show those flows just a second? Yes, yes, there's definitely flow. Uh, there's a bunch of flow templates. So that come with this and... Uh, the one difficulty there was um, the screens were really in tightly wrapped up uh, screen components and Apex actions, and you couldn't change things in it, like the labels of things, right? It's it's still the same way, right? Yeah, that's not even something that I even uh, bothered with, with because we didn't have a whole a lot of time. Uh, so you yeah. talk about this, and uh, there's a scheduler flow uh, templates right here. Actually, yeah. yes, we did, we did have to mess with that in, in one case that this was the, I believe the inbound uh, new guest appointment for specifically for a guest user. Uh, yeah. So what, yeah, so the, you've got your screens over here and uh, as far as Apex is concerned, it's the save appointment right here. I believe this is what you're referring to, right? Um, I'll, I will tell you this about the ability for your external user to add that to their calendar, because I actually remember this on the CTA scenario. It did say that there was such a requirement that was in, I think it was an Acme gym and Jitender wrote that scenario. And so your options are to go with the Salesforce scheduler. The other option is to go with Calendly or Calendly. I use okay. Calendly myself. And Calendly actually comes with flows as well, pre-built that you can modify and they're very, very flexible. And so that's another really good solution, which in the real world, I would go with more often than the Salesforce scheduler. Uh, but again, this is a Salesforce product. And uh, so it was something we wanted to show off as um, it would be at some point probably doable for the federal government. But yeah, so this is basically your component. Again, I did not really mess with uh, with this, but there are some some things that you can configure. Uh, such and, and you're saying Calendly comes with Salesforce flows? Yes, Calendly app ah, comes with I Salesforce. Did, I did. I did not know that. I mean, they didn't have that back in the day. Now they have. Yeah. Well, they've they've had it as far back as. Tom, when you and I worked together, I remember looking at that, and that's actually, in fact, you're not going to even find this on the App Exchange. But you, if you go through the Calendly's website, uh, yeah. the App Exchange package, you can create it there. And at the end, so this is what I'm getting to: when you get the confirmation email, say, "Okay, so your appointment has been scheduled. Congratulations!" It will give you the options to add it to your calendar because you get the iCal. Huh. ICS and, and something else. So that piece right there, if this is something that you would want to you know, develop custom or look for yet another package that ju does just that, if that's the only differentiator, if that's like the customer hang up, uh, it's a must have, then if you go with Calendly, it's already done there for you. Yeah, okay, thank you. Yeah, well, any, other, any other questions from the audience? I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Sure. Thank you, Svet, for this presentation. Thank you, Andy. I actually took Andy's course on Udemy for flows, and I built a flow for this specific scheduler. I applied for this work, and I built it for a demo case for doctors, physicians. So physicians are my appointment resources. Mm -hmm. When uh, and I need a task created assigned to a physician to review patient records. So I build a flaw, and no matter what I do, the tasks are assigned to me, who is the owner of records. So I built a record triggered flow, flow on a service appointment, can't assign to these physicians. Okay, I built it on 
assigned resource, because they are assigned resources for service appointment and related lease, can't assign it to them, doesn't work. Um, and I don't know if you can share your insights or how you would uh, uh, um, approach thinking about it. Um, I've tried to build record trigger flow on so many different objects related to these appointments, but the, the tasks are always assigned to me. Thank you. So uh, first question is what kind of a license uh, do your physicians have in this case? The internal users, external users? They are internal users. I don't have external users. Okay, so that makes it easier. And uh, the org I'm talking about is that free demo org to which I just sent a link in a chat to which I applied the wallet for 30 days org, Salesforce scheduler. I shared with everybody how you can get it. Um, that's where it doesn't work. Okay, gotcha. And so you're trying to do everything in one flow. Basically, it's a one set of operations, right? This is a flow called assigned task to physician. And the task I created is to review patient records. And I just need to do one thing, and that is to assign it to that physician who in my work is, as it relates to each service appointment, is an assigned resource. Mm -hmm. But no matter what I do, it's assigned to me. <laughs> I got you. Okay. Have you set them up as a Salesforce user? And this trial work because if you're not a user, I don't think you can be assigned a task. Yes, every physician is a user, and they are internal to my work. And uh, I configured everything in Salesforce Scheduler according to that setup. Mm -hmm. um, by the way, Andy, to answer your question about you changing in the original flow, there is a Salesforce help article. If you want, I can send it to you that explains how to do it. Okay, that'd be great how to change skill, the screens. But yeah, I just need this one thing that I just couldn't figure out how to assign it to the assigned resource can for the I, first appointment. Can I take a stab at this? Let me let me think out loud. Okay, yeah. so- I'll no, take perfect, thank that you. Well. Yes, yeah, go, go ahead. So, so uh, Anna, uh, your, when, when your uh, user books the appointment, they are the guest user. Right. Okay, because so who books the appointment is, I don't have that component of the experience cloud. Who books the appointment is my service uh, call taker inside my organization. So the appointment so far in our scenario is happening on the phone. So you, the patient are calling, um, I'm answering the phone and I'm mm -hmm. scheduling it as a user in my org for other users in my org who are physicians, but I'm just a front desk. Okay, so mm -hmm. an, an, an internal user is actually trying to book the appointment then, right? Yeah, they and in that the case, that internal user is also Anazable because this is a make-believe scenario, right? <laughs> okay, so when the internal user is booking the appointment, they want to actually assign uh, the task that's created as a result, right? Is that is that what I'm understanding? Yes. To another user, right? To another user who is set up as an assigned resource to this service appointment. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this internal user who is taking the call to set up the appointment, what is their profile? Their profile is work admin. They are system admin. admin. Mm -hmm. Then I don't see why they wouldn't be able to assign the task, to be honest with you. If they were not system admin, then I could understand maybe they cannot do that assignment. Okay, we... so here's the thing. The task is always assigned. The automation works, but the task is assigned to them. So as far as this task needs to be assigned to the assigned resource. Mm -hmm. And when I set it up on uh, as a record triggered flow on service appointment, I cannot find a way to assign to the service to the assigned resource object. Okay, so but you 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 do understand though the resource record is different than the user record, right? So an internal user can be a resource, but you need to be using the user ID to assign the task to the user. Maybe that's where you're kind of missing it. Mm. 
I so, think that's exactly what I'm missing. Is. For, for us to understand that, we would have to look at your debugger and then see what ID it's picking up and then whether it's returning some kind of error or something like that. And one other thing is if, I mean, your user, internal user, who is setting up this appointment is not going to be always system admin. So you may want to think asyncing that flow. Use async or like schedule path or something so that always the default process automation user who is most probably going to be the system admin will be the context who's running that job. That yes, I created async path, mm -hmm. and on my uh, and on my path, I created to continue this assignment. The assignment works, but it's always assigned to me, who is the user scheduling oh. it. Uh, so, how to figure out the the ability to assign to the assigned resource for service appointment is what I haven't been able to figure out. Yeah, so run a debug run and then share it with us, and then we can look at it. Okay, let me go back to that org because I don't have it pulled up. Give me a few moments. Yeah, Thank of you. course, but we can't do it right now anyway. So I'm going to paste the invite link to the Salesforce break uh, Slack workspace and you can come back to that anytime and then we'll walk you step by step. That's work. perfect. Thank you so very much. So it's, it's in the chat. And I have another idea. This is something that I've done uh, before. Um, I, I can't seem to think that th this may have nothing to do with mixed DML operations, uh, but if it does, what you could do is decouple the flows. So you have two flows. The first flow could publish a platform event and the other flow would pick up the platform event and essentially it would happen like instantaneously. And platform events on platform, they are not subject to the limits, system limits. So you can essentially have unlimited platform events. And this way, it's broken up into two pieces. Mm -hmm. So you have to pass, of course, within the platform event, the ID of um, whatever it is, your service appointment, perhaps. Uh, so that might be another thing you could try. But uh, first, try everything that Andy said. He's the foremost expert. Between the two of us, I would listen to him for sure. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, that that platform event is also useful, but that's usually my last resort if async or the schedule path doesn't work. Thanks, guys, for taking my question. Yeah, you bet, you bet. So, I'm reading the message from Dana. Yeah. The work organization has uses health card experience card for their COVID vaccination. Very similar. Yeah. So, I, of course, I got the idea when I was getting vaccinated now years ago. And um, the vaccination the vaccine cloud, originally, they weren't even using the Salesforce schedule. I think they were using Scheduler. Uh, but then they switched to Salesforce Scheduler, which actually could not handle like a huge volume of records. But I remember when I went to my local university to get the, the first shot, uh, they were using Experience Cloud. Of course, the vaccination techs had no idea what system they were using, but I recognized the little icon uh, for contact. I'm like, oh, you guys are using Salesforce. I actually know people who built this for you. And I thought that was, that was really, really cool. Yeah, I, I think in Florida, Coastal Cloud built it. Uh, when I got my first vaccination, uh, they used that system platform. I could recognize it myself. They 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 had also labels, stickers, and it was quite comprehensive, quite mm -hmm. quite good system. Yep. Yeah. Oh, uh, one more thing that just popped into my head, and that was um, I actually put together another presentation which I gave uh, internally at at Booz. Uh, this was on the Summer Twenty Three release notes, and of course, you know, there's. There's a deck that I found from Salesforce that has 300 slides. And of course you pick out the stuff that's most interesting to you. So there's an extension now to the Salesforce scheduler, which is meant for walk-ins. So let's say you've got somebody and you give them an iPad and they are able to schedule something. It's kind of like take a number, but uh, with Salesforce flavor, it's a bit more advanced. So that's going to be another thing which I was just listening to Anna, and um, it sounds like that's something that could be used by the internal user, but um, it kind of begs the question of why do you need the scheduler if you are on the phone, you can just create the service appointment yourself, uh, but then the actual 
scheduling as, as in finding the appropriate person for that appointment, that might be where it comes in and just makes it faster and easier. Okay, I can answer that because there were requirements. This is for a job interview for um, that I'm interviewing at one of the partners. And the case they gave me, I could figure out either in health cloud because this is for medical facility, or I could build it in sales for scheduler. When I tried health cloud, they wanted to see my scheduling capabilities um, with all these different locations and all of that. But with um, when I tried Health Cloud, the demo work for Health Cloud does not come with any scheduling capabilities. That's why I chose the the Salesforce scheduler demo work valid for thirty days. Mm -hmm. that's, a tough, that's a tough uh, interview question. Yeah, <laughs> somebody should pay for that. <laughs> Yes, recently I got a case from a partner with like two pages of technical requirements that I had to spend like seven hours on building. Um, it, it was more complex than this one. This one I really actually enjoyed, except I, I need to figure out the final task assignment thing. <laughs> Gosh, I remember those that would take you like forever to solution something once I spent a whole week. And I got the offer, which I was happy to turn down. <laughs> so, but, you know, two pages of technical requirements at this point, like if you've been studying for the CTA exam where you get 12 pages of requirements and three hours to do it, that sounds like a dream come true. Two pages and you get seven hours to, to do it. So, but yeah, and then it actually has to work. It has to be practical, not just theoretical. Thank you. You know, it's funny that you're saying it because it, it actually comforts me to know that you spend so much time on your job interviews too. I haven't received an offer yet, but I have enjoyed uh, these different cases. I would say most cases that I've received from partners for job interviews, they imply that you would use um, the data that is already in Salesforce and it just, just a couple of things they ask you to do. But the two last cases I received, they need you to create your own dummy data. They need you to create so many different custom objects. So this has been quite a stretch, but I enjoy thinking this through as long as it works at the end. <laughs> That's why I signed up for this meeting because I thought maybe I could get some ideas about task assignment uh, from you and you guys are helping me think through it. Thank you. Hey, Svet, thanks for showing um, Amazon Connect and, and the voice. I I used it eight years ago or or it, it was yeah, just like first come out it was it was pretty raw and crude and what you what you showed was uh definitely a more advanced mature product and it was mm -hmm. kind of fun it was fun to see you um show the setup on that and i really really enjoyed that um i also enjoyed you showing the scheduler um i work at a company that does uh advice uh financial advice um for their customers and they work in teams they work in um advice teams do you know if that scheduler product allows a um, a team member to set up or to, um, set up scheduling for another person? So if I'm if I'm an associate, I I want to set up scheduling for our main financial advisor in our company. Can I set up scheduling so that it doesn't necessarily go to my calendar, but it would go to my teammate's calendar? So the whole point of this is, is a self-service kind of thing so that uh, no internal user is involved in the process of scheduling. So you set up the rules and then it basically decides who is available or based on certain criteria, assigns it to them. Uh, so that, that would be one way to do it. But right. it's also about giving the right permissions to the right people. Uh, but if you're going to be using this solution and then having your internal people schedule things, then it kind of defeats the purpose of the Salesforce scheduler uh, because it's it's all about uh, a seamless experience, which is what I showed in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Now, again, I look into Calendly because Calendly also worked with Teams. There's such a thing as one of the subscription levels and it's far cheaper than this one. Um, that's where you can also decide where, and the routing can actually be set up in Salesforce 
but even easier on the Calendly site, which you access through Calendly.com. So I'd look at both options and decide which one makes more sense. And uh, this is the, the real world, right? There's not the government unlimited budget, right? So you have to also kind of take the budget into consideration. Yeah. Too. yeah. But, but Stuart, in the end, the solution doesn't really care who's booking it. They can book for any of the resources that are defined in the system. So you you know how you expose the flow like externally and you have to take extra steps to make sure that it's available for the guest user. If you don't do that, it just becomes available internally. Mm -hmm. But then anybody internal can book an appointment for another resource that's available in the system as bookable. So yeah, you, you, can, you can use it that way. Okay. And the licensing is per the resource that's been booked. So, you know, if you have 50 people who are going to be booked, you pay 50 times whatever per month. That's how it used to be. Okay. Okay. If, if it hasn't changed. Cool. Uh, one thing I, I was going to ask you, Svet, did you have to plug in your credit card, set up like a, an instance on Amazon Web Services to do the voice demo? Is that how that works? No, no, I didn't have to do any of that. Uh, you just registered to your um, email address. And in fact, I had to use my own personal one uh, because the, the work email address, be careful with that. S some of the large corporations have a way of checking what accounts have been opened using that email. And so you may get a very scary email saying that you must shut it down or transfer it to another. So if you use your you know, the one that you actually control, that would be easier. But this is uh, this was entirely free. Um, I'm not sure at what point did they make it convert. But um, so that's the Amazon Connect. The trial force org is alive for a whole year. So which is which is great. So here I'm putting in the trial force ID into the chat and um, this is this is basically if you go through the environment hub and uh, you select you know spin up a new org using a template uh, put in the trial force id you put it in there and boom there you go uh, so yeah you, you get fully built out um, experience clouds and everything so it looks very government like so cool. well well received Well, thank you very much. Yeah, my pleasure. So I I'm guess we're almost out of time. Thank you very much for joining. And thanks, uh, Svet, for sh uh, sharing the knowledge. That's very helpful. Uh, and uh, we'll see you uh, with the next meeting then. We'll, we'll, yeah, so have, yeah, we'll share the recording and then Svet volunteered the, the presentation, right? Is that yes. possible? Yeah, I'll, I'll be also sharing the presentation. And I'm uh, quite active on Architect Ohana. So if you guys are not there, please feel free to join. I'm also connected to you all via LinkedIn. I mean, not maybe all, but uh, I see quite a few friends here. So thank you for joining and uh, suffering through this with me. <laughs> all right. Have a great day, everybody. It was great. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thank